and welcome back to another episode of the screening room with Adenike. So today I'll be talking to you about a brand new Nigerian movie titled Don't Cry For Me. It was produced by Susan Peters. You definitely want to hear what I have to say. I know some of you might have seen it because it was in Nigerian cinemas a while back. So if you've seen it right, do we agree or do we not agree? Either way, that's the movie I'm going to be talking about today. Sit back, relax, enjoy the episode and as always, I'll be right back. One home. You have a man that worships the ground you walk on. Ali? This, this isn't working, honey. The bastard dumped me! Alright guys, welcome back. So, Don't Cry For Me, a Royal Arts Academy production that was produced by M.M. Eastong and Susan, Peter, Susan Peters, executively produced by Susan Peters. It was directed by Desmond Elliott. The movie features Utin Wanchuku, Susan Peters, Mary Lazarus, Joseph Benjamin, Yvonne Jagade, Yvonne Nelson, and uh, some other people. The movie was about Fred and Alero. Fred was a blind guy. He got in an accident, he lost his sight, and he was going through um, a hard time and then Alera on the other hand had everything well, going for her she had a good job she was a nurse a counselor and uh, she had a man a husband who loved her and all of that but all of a sudden her husband left her and she stuck with trying to take care of this guy who lost his sight Fred and the stuff that just happened you know right after things start unfolding right um, I'm giving this movie 3.5 over five uh it wasn't a terrible movie but uh, i'm not super excited about it what i liked you know as always royal arts academy productions are always consistent in terms of production quality sound picture uh, directing they always have that going their sets their costumes their makeup uh, all that is always going for them it's always consistent right so that's good we know that about Real Arts Academy however there are a few things I didn't like about this movie number one was the fact that the movie was extremely long it was it had part one and part two and then each part was like an hour 40 minutes ish give or take you know so it was really long unnecessarily long because there were some scenes i would have caught out and we could have done without and still enjoyed the movie even better than i did while i was watching it you know and then because it was so long it became boring at some point like you could go the pace of 30 minutes and it would just be nothing happening and they're just going through the motions and we are just going through the process of getting to the end you know and it's just going and it's just like uh yawning and all but then it picks up again and it starts going you know so so I, I feel like they should have cut out a lot of scenes, made the movie shorter, and then we would have enjoyed the movie a lot better. Now the story is not, you know, unique or anything. Story of boy meets girl, girl meets boy, they fall in, they fall in love, they have issues, they go apart, then they sort out their issues, they come back to the, together again and they live happily ever, ever after nothing spectacular it's a typical romantic drama but what made the movie different was you know of course the process of okay how do we get to the end of the movie so yeah so it was too long and they should have cut a lot of scenes and made the story a lot uh simpler and all of that and i would have enjoyed the movie better than i did another thing about the movie was that it was um the editing wasn't too good because they were the way they edited it and the sequencing of the movie wasn't the easiest to follow like it took me a while to realize we were going back and forth back and forth we we're like we we're going uh into the we we're, were going from the present to the past and then back to the present to the past so the way they edited it they didn't give us a clue to let us know okay this stuff happened before you know it took me a while to figure it out so it was it wasn't the easiest thing to follow the way they arranged the movie and then the way they edited it i mean after a while you kind of get a hang of it but initially you're like okay what is going on here but after a while you get a hang of it and then you get into the movie as it progresses even nelson was in the movie as well and she wasn't i mean she didn't do anything out of the ordinary she was just the regular character she's always acted rich sports you know entitled and all and then even jacket acted well she's trying to make a comeback and i appreciate her i think she's a good actress but she was over the top in this film i mean i got to a point i was like ah, girl calm down <laughs> you know her energy was super super high and it was so high and it wasn't at the same pace as everyone else's so you could tell she was doing too much so i would have told her to put it down just a notch or maybe two and then just to, to make sure you know she's not 
in a cloud or maybe in a cloud or by herself or something yeah but mary lazarus i love her she's a fantastic actress it was good to see her in this movie um again as well i like the fact that U uchi uchi Uwangchuku was on the download in this movie it wasn't the oh i'm uchi yes i'm uchi <laughs> just another regular guy i really liked that it was good to just watch him you know just be regular and all overall i thought this movie was well directed it's a good story good production everything good acting and actresses everything came together it's just not something i'm terribly excited about however do i think you should watch it absolutely it's to yes 3.5 over 5 for don't cry for me by season pizzas make sure to go check it out i saw it on ibaka tv i'm going to put the link down below in the description box so you can go see it as well thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you guys i love you guys and i hope to see you again very soon but until then remain in god god bless you have a fantastic rest of your week bye bye